Hello guys, today we're going to talk about why cash is king. <clears throat> so I want to apologize for the sound of my voice. I'm going, <laughs> I have been hit by allergies pretty bad. So we're, I'm going to try and get through this without too much <clears throat> straightening of my throat or whatever. So here we go. So first thing I want to cover with this is um, I am using my notes, so if I look down, that's what I'm trying to reference here. First thing I want to cover is what cash is. Okay, so what is it? When we say cash, what are we really talking about? So cash throughout history has been a physical medium used to exchange for goods and services. Okay, so once you spend it, it's gone. Um, you have to work or invest to make more, and you have control over it. All right. So some examples of that are like goats, beads, shells, um, <clears throat> the paper cloth mix we use right now, papyrus, which is Egyptian paper they made, cattle, uh, metal, because we started, you know, smithing our own coins, and then pieces of leather in China, they use pieces of leather. Um, so think about all that. That's all physical things. You can you can stack that up. You can say I have this much of it, and whatever value it has is decided by us. Okay. I think the two most important things to remember about money is that one, we decide what value it has, and two, we control it. All right. The money is entirely based on the people. All right. So with these principles in mind. Um, we can see how keeping cash as something physical provides power to like you and me or even the big guys and it gives mobility to everyone including you <laughs> okay <clears throat> so when we use debt OPM or create these digital forms of money it takes that power out of our hands okay and we become reliant on the good graces of whoever runs that digital currency, whether it be a bank, whether it be a different kind of business such as PayPal or Patreon, etc. Huh. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, and when it takes it out of our hands, we lose that power. Okay. And we transfer it to the banks and governments and businesses. So that's not good. All right. If you have money, you can go and you can physically spend it wherever you want to, right? You can pass it down to your heirs, etc. But if you cannot do that, then you've lost the ability to pay for things that you need, like medicines, foods, etc. like that. A perfect example of this is what just happened in Russia. The people of Russia, even though whether they agree with the war that's going on or not, many of them lost the ability to make their make their money because a business decided that a business and a government that was foreign to them decided that they could no longer have that money all right if this money was something that was physical like they took the digital part and turned it into rupees okay or whatever Russia has now I'm not sure if they're part of the uh, EU or not I don't think they are but <clears throat> they would be able to spend that and it wouldn't matter as much what the company did. But because if we're keeping it all digital, we lose the power to run our own lives, to be able to make decisions for ourselves. Because now companies who don't like what you say, governments who don't like what you do, <clears throat> get to decide whether or not you, you have your money. All right. So that in, in essence, I want to be clear also, I guess I should really say that I don't think letting a bank catch your money so that you can take it out in cash is really wrong. It still, it still poses the same problem, but if you can get to it and get it out in cash, then that's really ideal, right? And the, the best way would be if your employer just paid you in cash or food or something, that'd be better, but... I'm willing to do a bit of a compromise, right? All of my investing is digital. Because I don't have a way right now to do it physically. 
and this is where I'm kind of going with this, is that it's really better. I'm going to take these investments I make and turn them into assets. So something that always has value, and that's land, food, housing, or clothing. If you can invest in any of these, you can really, you can turn a profit because we need these things always. These, the, this and, and medication <clears throat> never runs out of need. Okay. So really, it's really, really best to take your money, turn it into assets. Don't use other people's money because again, they then have that level of control on your life. Excuse me. <clears throat> so then another layer too that I just thought of, well, I didn't just think of, but another layer too to think about from a Christian perspective, biblically, we are commanded to leave an inheritance. That's in Proverbs 13, 22, right? If we totally divulge into a monetary system that's not physical, our ability to do so will be greatly diminished. It's already not great right now. We have government controls and things of that nature, but you can get around those by just giving whatever you want, whatever you want people to have as their inheritance, giving it to them before you die. I mean, that's a very simple way of getting around it, okay? <clears throat> but if everything is digital, even giving it to them before you die could they can still say, well, no, we don't want you to give them that. Okay. It becomes increasingly that the government and businesses decide how you run your life. And that's not good. You're giving them power to make decisions for you. You're giving them the power to say, Hey, you can't say that you, you have to, you have to take the jab. You have to work this way. Um, you're not allowed to have that religious belief etc because they they have your money they have control of, of the way that you barter with other people to get the things that you need okay it, it just it, it this situation although cool like it's a really cool thing that we can do things digitally but at the same time people who want power people who are in power are now using it to control us once again all right so I do advocate for a, a, a balanced view. Sure, let the bank catch your money. Take it out, okay? Don't leave it in the bank. Take it out in cash. <clears throat> Have a safe in your house, things like that. Like, take more personal control of what you have and where it is, all right? This, uh, people, the pushback I usually get on this is like, well, everything is digital now. I can't buy anything without going online. Okay, so that's not true. It might take you some time to find it, but it is out here and it might be more expensive. To me, it is worth the cost to not be chained to a digital society and to, and to just be able to go pay my cash and be done with it than it is, and to pay that more. I'm willing to do that, to not to not have that chain attached to me, okay? And I do view it as a chain because basically, if I get too dependent on things that that are like Amazon, for example, if I get too dependent on that, when I will do things to make sure that that doesn't go away. It's just like, um, it's just like welfare. People who all their lives exist on welfare they will do things. They will vote a certain way. They will support certain things or certain people <clears throat> to make sure that welfare stays for them. And that's what I don't want to do here either. I don't want to be so in love with convenience and ease that I lose my ability to make my own choices as a free person. And that's not something that gets talked about too much, right? Everybody just sort of wants to do the easy thing. Um, but I think it's very important that we look at every aspect of our life and go, am I still free? What is this really taking away from me? How does this help me live a good, you know, Christian life? What is a way that I could live my life maybe differently that is closer to what the Bible says? Because basically for me, that's where it's at. So I think personally, 
God is about that cash life. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it things work out better if you can just invest in these assets as soon as possible and things like that. Um, I do understand that doing this means you have to have an early start in life. I think that's another thing that's very important. If you're a parent, if you're a parent helper, if you're a, an uncle, whoever you are, and you have a kid or you have someone who has a kid and you're helping them out, start a little savings account for them. Start something where they can, where they will have this head start in life. Okay. And I don't mean savings account at bank. I mean, take an envelope, stick some money in there for them. Something like that. Teach them how to grow food or at least have the conversation. Hey, you know, you grow your own food. Teach them where things come from, why we want to be as independent as possible. I read the Bible verse on my last one that says that we are, we're supposed to be, we're not supposed to be dependent on other people our whole lives, right? When something goes down, yes, depend on people. We're there to help each other. But our lives are supposed to be independent lives lived for God where he wants us to be. <clears throat> and you risk your ability to move about freely. You risk your ability to go where God tells you to go and do these things by doing the easy thing, having that digital currency doing the thing that everybody else does, right? So that's just something to think about, guys, today. I uh, I have a serious thing with this where I just, I really want my cash in my hand. I've always been that way because it has never failed. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has never failed that when the electricity goes down and nobody can get their cards to work, I have cash. Well, guess what? They have cash. They can open the drawer. We can do an exchange. I can buy food. It has never failed me when it comes to things that I need and grids start going down. I've been in situations where if I didn't have cash, then I would not have eaten that day. All right. Just something to think about. <laughs> this is about 12 minutes long already. So just think about what changes you can make in your life, how much of it does, how much of this controls your life. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Remember to pray and read your Bible also. Just be in prayer about these sort of things and get into your Bible for guidance. Well, I'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>